So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about this pen. It is called the Hauser XO20. It's basically a retractable version of this pen, which is the Hauser XO. Uh, this is a pen that I really liked and I've been using for a few years now. I've had a, maybe, I don't know, a 20 pack of them or maybe a few 10 packs, something like that. But it is a Indian ballpoint pen. So it's made in India and it's uh, aimed at the Indian market. It's from this company, Hauser, that describes himself as, as German. It says Germany here, but I believe the pen, pen is made in India. Maybe the company's history is German. I, I don't really know. But the fact of the matter is they came out with this pen, which is the XO20. I originally thought it was the XO2.0, uh, but it is definitely the XO20. And as you can see, it's a very similar pen, but it is a retractable instead of a capped ballpoint. The uh, XO is uh, it is an oil-based ballpoint ink, but it uses a Jetstream-like ink or a Pilot Acro-like ink. So it's very smooth, but it still manages to write on all surfaces, and the ink lasts for a very long time, or, you know, the pen lasts for a very long time. Just, like, some background on this pen. It's easy to find on Amazon, some other places, eBay, stuff like that. Clearly, I don't think it's as easy to find in the U.S. or Europe as it would be in India, but you can find it and uh, relatively affordable, not nearly what you would pay uh, locally, but still quite affordable. And it's just a really good writer. Uh, you know, it's not at the level of a Jetstream or an Acro or, or one of those sort of like best in class pens, but it's quite close and it comes in for a fraction of the cost, even after paying for some shipping and stuff like that. So I really do like these and just a simple, reliable pen. I've had very good luck with them over the past few years. It has some downsides. Like it has this needle tip design, which is a little bit fragile. I've bent a few of these and I've had a few of these actually leak ink. If you keep them upright over the course of a few months, one or two of them has, again, and when you're buying 20 or 30 of them at a time, because that's how they sell them, you know, you're not going to be using all of them at once. So I've definitely seen some ink leakage from them, which is kind of annoying, but they work well and they're reliable. Pretty cool looking pen, the cap works well so i don't really have too much negative feedback about them oh and they come with a ton of ink just look at that it is just slammed fill of ink this one i did some testing from basically where that line is here to here you can see that is uh fair what it was it was like maybe six or seven written sheets last for a long time jump ahead a year maybe two years and hauser has released this pen this is the xo20 and also sold in multi-packs. This one's harder to find. It took me a while to hunt it down. And then the first time I bought it, the company actually sent me this pen, which was you know, pretty annoying because I waited, you know, like three or four weeks. But the shipping was super slow. I forgot I even ordered it. And then a bunch of these showed up and I was waiting for these. I had to order it again. Not a big deal. The company was nice about it. Uh, but here's the pen. So same color, same basic design aesthetic. We see the metal clip as opposed to plastic clip is a little bit off parallel which is like just sort of like incredibly annoying but also super minor it doesn't affect the performance of the pen at all but clearly it's off by like a degree or two you can kind of tweak it but then i think i overcorrected and sort of like you're always playing with it anyway it says hauser germany sort of imprinted on there it has this little plastic stop here to help it catch on your notebook or backpack, whatever have you, whatever you have. Retractable. The click does not feel very good. It feels kind of kind of muddy, a little like wishy-washy, kind of like there's some friction over here. It's not great, but it works. As far as the label goes, it's pretty simple. What do we see? Hauser XO 2.0, or uh, 20 rather. It looks like 2.0, but it's 20. Uh, here is an ID number, or, you know, barcode, whatever. It doesn't really mean anything to me. No pricing information and no refill information. The pen itself is all hard plastic, which is uh, pretty common in this price range. And the uh, hard plastic has some contours. Here's some dot type grips, just those little dots here. And those are a little bit variable. They're softer here and more pronounced here. Some kind of swoops like a Pentel RSVP or something like that. And then here we have the front matter, just simple hard plastic. There's no grip material or anything like that, just a single 
material throughout. The pen opens at the front, just like last time, and now we see it has a spring, a spring stop right here, which is a, a pretty common design. You'd find a lot of you know Japanese pens would have this, and now we have a refill with a sticker on it. It's a relatively wide ballpoint refill, has some backstab, so it actually looks a bit like a gel refill, and it's much shorter than it was previously. Here's what we were looking at before. Again, it's still the ballpoint, it still has the this follower back there and all that, but now we see the, you now let's move this so we have a good reference point. I'm gonna line up, let's line up the fronts. And what do we see? We've moved from a needle tip to a conical tip and spring stop was changed. This one doesn't have a spring stop. That's just the stop for it. Here's a spring stop with the shoulder. The same diameter refill, which is again on the wide side for a ballpoint, especially if you've been looking at like a, a Bic crystal or one of those old school ballpoints where they're extremely narrow. But uh, ink wise, now if we line up the ink, you're looking at a good, about a third less ink. It's kind of a bummer if you're a value shopper, but you do get the conical tip, which I would say is preferable and uh, probably more expensive to produce. If you are buying this pen, just keep in mind that you are sacrificing a fair bit of ink to get it. This model is more expensive than the other one. And some part of that I'm sure is was it's newer and harder to get, but I think it's just a more complex pen and it will probably ultimately always be more expensive than the standard model. I mean, there's a spring there, there's some complications in the retractable mechanism. So I'm not really shocked that it's more expensive. Okay, so now let's hop into the writing test. Generally speaking, I found the XO to be acceptable, but it doesn't seem to be quite as good as the standard XO. Maybe it's just in my head. It was, it's quite close, but it seems to be slightly degraded. Again, that's, it's really hard to say because it's a, it's a newer pen. These are older. Maybe something changed in the formula. Maybe this set, I've only used one set of these XOs. So that's like, I think it was 10 pens, maybe 12 pens. And maybe they just got too hot or too cold during shipment or who knows what. They seem to write a slight bit worse than the XO. They're in the same ballpark. It's a pretty smooth writer, quite reliable, quite consistent. Not at the level of the Acro or usually the Jetstream is the best comparison in this spot. Maybe a Zebra Emulsion type ink. So it's a good writer, but not a best in class. So that's the XO20. And here's the XO. The XO just feels in, to me a little smoother. Maybe it's the same ink, but this needle tip, even though I would say it's worse from a durability standpoint, it might be just as good or it might be smoother in how it writes. Or maybe the manufacturing process on the needle tip is better because they've been making them longer. So on the whole, I do prefer writing with the standard XO. It, for me, it appears to be smoother and that could be the tip due to the tip that could be due to the ink hard to say i'm guessing it's probably the tip and how it's made but i do prefer writing with the standard exo it's like better flow smoother for me the overall experience is a little bit better the xo20 is totally sufficient is relatively smooth maybe not quite as the standard xo but it's definitely smooth enough i think the line is a little bit thicker my understanding is that the standard XO is a 0.6 millimeter, and the XO20 has moved to a 0.7 millimeter. I think that just has to do with moving from the needle tip to the conical tip. I think maybe you're getting a little bit of extra smoothness because it's a smaller tip. I don't know. Usually, as the ballpoint size goes up, you are increasing smoothness, right? A, a big crystal, uh, the standard one. In, which is like a 1.2 millimeter or something like that, or 1.0, is not as smooth as the, the bold, which is 1.6. Here, it's hard to say why, but I found the 0.6 to be a little bit smoother. That said, it's a very reliable writer. It's fun to use. I think it's a pretty cool looking pen, and uh, I've been enjoying using it. So it's a nice addition to my sort of a uh, type of, like I would say, like kind of, these are like everyday type pens. You don't have to worry about losing it. It'll, you can keep it in your car. You could, you know, hand it to someone and let them borrow it. You're not going to be overly concerned, but you, you'll still get a good writing experience and you can definitely, you know, write down, you know, 10 pages in a row with this thing. It'll have no problems 
with that. It's not actually that smudgy either. You see very little accumulation on the pen. Definitely some that's going to be inherent to a thick ballpoint ink like this, but a lot less than you'd see some from some of the competitors, especially if you're doing scribbling or writing quickly where the ink tends to accumulate in that area. I would say it's better than most. Okay. So at the end of the day, I do like the Hauser XO and I like the Hauser XO 20. I don't think it's worth tracking down the Hauser XO 20. You know, if they're like next to each other in a store and they're the same price, sure. Go ahead and grab the 20. I wouldn't blame you, but if you're shopping online, it's quite easy to get the XO and they're quite affordable. Whereas it's kind of a pain to find the XO 20s now and they're relatively affordable, but not nearly as cheap as the XOs. So I would say just stick with the original deal with the fact that it's capped with it's uh, overall, I would say a better pen than the XO 20. So that pretty much covers it. Thanks for watching.